I'd like to briefly illustrate how the forward rate agreement provides a hedge to either the seller of the contract who's looking to lock in a fixed lending rate or the buyer of the fixed rate agreement who's looking to lock in a fixed borrowing rate. So here I'll look at the forward rate agreement from the perspective of the seller who's looking to lock in a fixed lending rate. Their counterparty in this forward rate agreement, which is a derivative contract, is the buyer who's looking to lock in a fixed borrowing rate. As in my previous example, I'll assume that the notional on this contract is $100 million. Recall, this is not a loan, no principal is invested. The notional is simply referenced for purposes of the payoff. The FRA does need to have a fixed rate, and so this is 4% per annum. So our seller is looking to lock in the 4% as a fixed lending rate. Now the fixed, this is a forward loan effectively. So the fixed rate in this case will begin in three years and it will cover a period of three months. Hence this notation, a fixed grade agreement begins in three years for a three month period. So ending really in 3.25 years. And so we have a timeline here where we start at the trade date, the seller and the buyer as counterparties on the contract, but nothing happens. There's no principal invested. There's just specification of the notional and the print and the notional and the fixed rate and who's the buyer and seller. Then we go forward three years in time from the trade date, trade one year, two year, three years during which this period, because the forward rate agreement doesn't start for three years, we could call this a waiting period. Nothing happens at the end of three years. This forward rate agreement matures and we could call this the settlement date. And at that point in time, then remember, we're going to look at this first from the perspective of the seller at the end of three years, then. We've always, both counterparties have known that the fixed rate is 4%. It's time to look at the then prevailing three month LIBOR rate in this case, or whatever is the referenced rate or index in the contract. In this case, we'll assume it's LIBOR. So we get to the end of three years and we find that the, in this case, the three month LIBOR is dropped down to three and a half percent, or let's assume that interest rates have dropped then we can determine what the settlement is. And it's simply the notional amount, 100 million, multiplied by the difference in the rate here, that 4%, which was really a fixed lending rate for the seller, minus the 3.5% that was unknown at the beginning, but is now the then prevailing rate. And that difference times the notional would give us an annual amount. But remember, this is just for a three, this just covers a three month period. So we multiply by 0.25. And so that amount is 125,000. And that would apply, that would be the correct settlement amount at the end of 3.25 years. However, we are here at the end of three years when we can make this determination so that we could also simply present value that amount to the settlement date and we'll be done. And so the present value of that 125,000 happens to be 123916 discounted at the same three-month three, year, three month LIBOR. And so you'll notice we are from the perspective of the seller and this cash flow is positive. So they are receiving this amount and the buyer is losing this amount. So the buyer is paying $123,916 to the seller. So the seller profits, buyer loses. And you'll notice this hedge worked exactly as intended for the seller. After all, they were planning to possibly their underlying exposures that they were planning to extend a loan three years in the future, but they didn't want to be exposed to a drop in interest rates, right? If they don't hedge and interest rates drop, then the loan in the future will enjoy a lower interest rate. So their, their position in this contract would be as the seller of the forward rate agreement, because in this case, the interest rate did drop, to three and a half percent. And consequently, the seller receives the cash payment. And so this makes them whole on the loss on their underlying loan exposure. And so I'll just briefly look at it also from the borrower's perspective. We can look at the same contract, 
But the buyer, the buyer in the afford rate agreement is looking to lock in a fixed borrowing rate. So in this case, the company or the buyer of the, con of the contract is expecting to borrow in the future, but their exposure, what they want to avoid is a situation where interest rates increase, right? The lender wanted to hedge against a scenario where interest rates decrease. The borrower wants to hedge against a scenario where interest rates increase. So these contract terms can be the same. They're the other counterparty. And now we can imagine that their risk is actually realized. And let's say the rate goes up to the three month LIBOR goes up to four and a half percent. And then this calculation would be the same, but we're now from the perspective of the borrower. So these two are switched. It's a difference between we're starting with the realized or then prevailing rate, could think of that as the floating rate, and subtracting the fixed rate on the contract. So we get the same values here, but from the buyer's perspective, it's positive. So in this case, when the interest rates increased to four and a half percent, the seller would have a negative cash flow, meaning they'd make the payment to the buyer, in this case, who's receiving the cash. And this hedge is working as planned. After all, interest rates have increased. In terms of their underlying exposure, they're going to have to go out and borrow at a higher rate. However, they're going to be made whole, so to speak, by the cash flow that they're receiving from the forward rate agreement as the derivative contract providing the hedge. So I hope that's helpful.